All right, everyone, welcome back to our Ask Properly in Brass episode. And this time around, we're going to answer two questions. And uh, why don't you just check right in with us? Alright, so we have this first question coming asking what is decoupling? Alright, so allow us to decipher this for you. Basically, decoupling is a process whereby a couple or two owners from a private property selling the shares to one another and one of the names is being extracted out from the ownership of the property itself. Uh, it's very, very common in terms of private property when people try to do some restructuring in the holding of the ownership. Most of the time, it's because maybe one person wants to be out of the ownership of that property. Sometimes people do that because they want to extract their name out so that they can buy another property without being taxed ABSD. Now, in the past, someone actually asked us before, is a couple, a husband and wife, able to take their name out of a HDB flat? So do take note that for HDB flat, this is not not possible. It was possible in the past, but in a couple of years ago, the government actually stopped this practice. So technically speaking, if the husband and the wife's name are both in the HDB flat, you cannot take the name out anymore. So let's talk about the private property portion. Now, the process is quite simple. Basically, the practice is that there has to be two lawyers that manages the decoupling process. So there's actually two different sets of legal fees involved. Usually, it's about in the range of about 6,000 plus or minus, depending on the complexity of the case itself. So that one, you can actually check back with your legal firm on what is the convincing fees for the decoupling process. But to simplify for you, assume the husband owns 50% of this uh, $1 million property, the wife wife owns 50%, let's say it's a joint ownership. For example, if the husband wants to take out the name from this property and let the wife fully own this property itself, what's going to happen is that firstly, a valuation has to be done. Once the valuation is done, the wife that is buying over the share of the husband will have to take a new loan in order to cover the entire mortgage of the property itself. So for example, if let's say the outstanding loan is like 600,000, the wife would then have to re-sign a new mortgage loan with the bank in order to undertake the entire 600,000 loan because this is deemed that the wife would then be the sole owner. So it's in fact an internal sale whereby the husband actually sells the property to the wife itself. And by then the husband's name can then be extracted out. They can then use the husband's name to buy another property. All right, so some things to take note as well on what are the fees that will be incurred. Basically, it's the legal fee for decoupling. Secondly, there is buyer stamp duty incurred on the wife portion. So the wife will have to pay buyer stamp duty to buy over the shares that is owned by the husband. So for example, if it's worth a million dollars, the husband is deemed to have owned 500,000 worth of the valuation, the wife owns 500,000. So the wife will have to pay buyer stamp duty on that portion, the share that the husband owns. And that would be the normal calculation, 4% minus 10,400 if it's above a million. Now, of course, there is also uh, additional fees involved if this is not the couple's first property. So for example, if this is their second property and the wife owns two properties. So when doing this, there is then additional buyer stamp duty incurred. Take note that for the husband to exit, if it's within the seller stamp duty period of three years, then technically it's going to be seller stamp duty incurred as well. So a few key factors to note is that to calculate what is the total amount of fees that will be incurred for this entire decoupling process and whether does it meet your objective of your property investment round. So it's very common nowadays that if a husband and wife owns only one private property and if they have the capability and prudency, some will use the decoupling method or in the other jargons is called the part purchase method whereby one of the names is being extracted out and then they will then use that name to buy another property so that the entire family then owns two properties in a sense. We hope that this uh, answers your question on decoupling. If you need more details on how this works or you're in the process of doing decoupling, you can always leave a comment down below. Come to our coffee session. Our buyer's consultant will always be available to help you. Okay, so we have another question from our audience asking about the opportunity cost of buying different types of properties. So basically the question is saying that he's a little bit confused as to what type of properties to buy. This is going to be his first one. He's not sure whether should he buy a BTO, should he buy a HDB resale, or should he buy a new launch private property or resale private property because he actually qualifies for the loan amount for all these four different types of properties. And this is going to be his first one and he's a little bit confused as in which one should he then go into for his first property purchase. So let's talk a little bit about what is the opportunity cost for each different 
different type of property. Let's just focus on the opportunity cost today. Okay, so let's talk about the first one now. If you're a first time buyer, you are young, going to get married. If we put other factors aside, other factors include whether do you want to stay near to your parents? Do you have the capability to hold this property for the mid to long term? Is it within your financial prudency? Let's put those factors on the left side, all right? And let's focus on this thing called the opportunity cost and the time frame before you can exit from this property. So it all depends on your strategy. So it depends whether do you want to own more than one property in future or you're a one property kind of person, you don't want to invest in property. So it really depends on your strategy for property investment. In Singapore, of course, a lot of people hope to own more than one. Uh, they aspire to upgrade or to invest. So it really depends on what is your ultimate strategy. So let's have a look at the first type of property, BTO. A BTO property, the moment you apply and buy, most of the time it takes about two and a half to three years to construct. That two and a half to three years from the day of application to the date that you get the key that is the construction phase and during these two and a half to three years you cannot purchase any other properties that is residential so basically you are locked in for that period from the date that you collect the key there is a five years minimum occupation period so all in three years construction period five years minimum occupation period there's an eight year time frame before you're allowed to sell the property and exit so during these eight years you're also not allowed to invest in any residential private property so you can only hold on to that bto so that's the the first portion on the second property if you're looking at a hdb resale for the moment that you buy you have to hold for five years so basically whether you fully paid it off uh, you take a loan from hdb you take a bank loan as long as you touch a hdb resale property it is a five year month before you can actually exit. All right, so that's for HDB resale properties. It's a five years holding period. You cannot sell, you cannot rent out. You can only rent out the rooms provided you're staying in the HDB property itself. You also cannot invest in private residential property in Singapore and overseas. So as long as it's residential, you cannot invest in any other properties. Only after the five years is accomplished, then you can do so. So the third kind of property is a private resale property. So private resale property, basically the only thing that is holding the seller is basically the three Three years seller stamp duty period to ensure that you fulfill that three year seller stamp duty you are still allowed to sell but if you sell within the first year you have a 12 percent tax second year is basically eight percent third year is four percent once you finish the third year you can basically sell without tax and for private new launch property basically during the construction period it is already running in concurrent with the seller stamp duty fulfillment period so the moment you put down a five percent booking fee and sign the smp your calculation date from the seller stamp duty period actually starts from there from the day that you sign the SMP so basically when the property is being constructed by the developer let's say it takes three years to construct you reach TOP date and just nice if three years later you get your keys then that will be around the time frame that your seller stamp duty is accomplished and you can then sell the property into the resale market so basically to summarize the BTO is about eight years HDB resale is five years and for private resale is three years and then for new launch is three years in terms of the seller obligation to hold on to the property it all depends on your plan how old you are right now calculate and plan your strategy based on your current age for example if let's say now you are age 35 just going to get married you want to buy a bto but you hope to invest in another property that will mean that by the time eight years is accomplished you will then be age 43 and at age 43 what would then be your strategy to own another property taking into account there's absd involved if you want to keep that hdb or do you want to sell that property and then reinvest in another property so today's sharing is basically about the opportunity cost of holding on to different types of property. So we hope that this episode helps you. See you soon. <laughs>